Okay. Well, very good. Thank you all for uh, joining us today. Uh, it looks like, uh, based on our numbers, we have a very, very large turnout. Uh, very much appreciate your time. I know we have many folks that are regular listeners. We probably have a few new folks uh, on the phone today as well, so welcome. Uh, we have a, a few speakers today, but uh, our keynote, if you will, uh, is uh, Brian Long from Memorial Healthcare, our president and CEO. And uh, I want to start by saying that uh, Brian and his team in Memorial have been doing an absolutely amazing job uh, protecting our community uh, and also doing some very innovative things, which I know Brian is uh, uh, going to touch on. But uh, I just want to say how grateful uh, we are to have such an amazing community hospital uh, here in Owasso, being able to not only serve our health care needs now, but have been doing so for, I believe, 99 years. Uh, we just passed the 99-year anniversary. So uh, very, very uh, grateful for everything that the team is doing uh, now and always. But uh, wanted to have uh, Brian join us today uh, to be able to not only give an update uh, on what's happening at Memorial, uh, but also... Uh, to, to be able to discuss some uh, things that are coming up, particularly uh, as it relates to testing. Uh, I just this morning got emails from two uh, prominent local businesses inquiring about availability of testing, uh, and I was able to write them back and say, hey, uh, our CEO from the hospital is going to be on the call and is going to talk about that. So I think this is extremely timely uh, to, to have Brian on the call today. So uh, with that, I would like to introduce uh, Brian Long uh, from Memorial Healthcare, uh, who will uh, give you an update. So, uh, Brian, the uh, floor is yours. Well, thank you, Justin. Let me first begin by um, asking, can can you can you hear me uh, fine right now, Justin? You are perfect, loud and clear. Okay, good. Well, thank you for those kind comments. I'll try to be uh, brief and succinct. Uh, at the same time, hopefully, provide some useful. Um, uh, information. I'm going to cover three different areas, uh, give you a little bit of an update as to what's happening in our area. I'm not going to cover too much on the national or international site or even on the Michigan site per se. I'm sure most of you have been following that in the, in the general news, uh, but I will talk a little bit about what's happening at Memorial within our own community uh, and, uh, and, and some of the things that are more directly impacting us right here in the county and and, and around the surrounding um, uh, community. I'm also going to talk uh, uh, a good deal about some testing or at least a, a, a little bit of testing. And then I'll try to answer any questions that may come out out of either the two that I've covered or anything that you would like me to address. So as it relates to the overall situation right now, uh, as you know, for the last couple of months, uh, we've been facing uh, this this issue and We've been facing something that's unprecedented. So we prepared early in March uh, for a surge um, uh, that we've seen in, in other areas. And we have seen certainly an uptick in our own. Uh, we have not seen some of the numbers that uh, were originally projected. And uh, we're very thankful for that. However, we've done everything we can to prepare as those numbers potentially can grow still. Um, and what we've seen to date. And that means also some of the work that I'll talk about a little bit later with testing. So where are we today? Well, right now, we, uh, we continue to see patients within the hospital. In fact, today, uh, we have five positive patients. And I'm blessed to report that we had uh, a couple additional patients just yesterday. Uh, and those individuals, uh, two of those individuals were discharged uh, just, uh, just this morning. So we have five in-house. Fortunately, None of those individuals are on a ventilator, and I, I know you've heard a lot about that. Uh, so these are patients that are being managed either on room air or supplemental oxygen only. Uh, and and we are, we're, as I said, we're grateful for that. So five in-house right now. As it relates to the county, uh, we've had 189 cases to date. That's just Shiawassee County. Um, of that number, uh, fortunately, 61 have actually already recovered uh, to this point and, uh, uh, and are either uh, back at work or, or uh, in a normal routine. We have had 12 deaths. Uh, so if you look at the overall numbers, in fact, you've heard probably recently, there's been some uh, news in the press or at least social media that says, 
you know, we're not getting the kind of numbers that we were anticipating, which we're not, which is, we're very thankful for. Uh, but, um, you know, if we look at those numbers a little more closely, we have about 66,000 residents this individual was considering. Of that, uh, of that number, that's about a quarter of a percent right now that have actually contracted uh, the disease. Um, and of that number, the 12 deaths represent less than two, two tenths of one percent um, of uh, of the of the total residents within the within the county. So it's a it's a small number, but I wanted to show a little bit where this is hitting, uh, y you know, most severely, and that is in our our senior living centers and and our long term care centers. Right now, the concern that we have is in those areas, and to give that some perspective. Uh, the Duran Center, uh, the Duran Senior Center, has now 92 individuals that have tested positive. Uh, 56 of those are residents, 36 are employees. Uh, one of the highest in the state, actually. Uh, Chesning is at 37 with 28 residents and nine employees. Our own Meadows uh, the Memorial uh, uh, Assisted Living is at six residents and three employees. Uh, Pleasant View is at 29, 17 residents and 12 employees. And at the hospital itself, between the meadows as well as the, the hospital, we've seen eight employees uh, that were that have been stricken with this and tested positive. Two of those individuals uh, uh, are are now still off, and we have had uh, uh, three of the individuals now return to work, which is good news. So it is in the area. It is it is uh, not as prevalent as what uh, some estimates were were. To, uh, to, to uh, uh, plan for, and we have planned for those higher numbers, um, uh, but fortunately we have not seen them and hope that we do not. But the numbers yeah. are there and they continue uh, to be something of a challenge. Um, as it relates to uh, testing, I, I, wanna, I wanna jump into that because I wanted to spend some time. You've heard a good deal of testing. We don't have enough testing uh, and, and other comments along that line. And I would agree, the testing in the state has been frankly abysmal. Uh, the testing at a national level is, is picking up in certain areas and not in others. Memorial invested uh, a lot of, of time uh, and dollars and, and human resources in trying to develop testing as quickly as possible. Back in the first part of March, when testing first started to come out, as a, as a potential, we work to acquire equipment and materials for that testing. And we're something like the fifth hospital in the state to be able to bring testing online. And surprisingly, there's still facilities not doing it. And most are not doing it nearly at the level that they should. And the state, well, the state has been pretty much ineffectual uh, as, as it relates to testing. So where we are today uh, is we're really focusing on two different kinds of testing. Uh, PCR testing, which is for the presence of the virus itself, and that continues to be done uh, daily here at Memorial through something uh, that we call our ACS or our alternative care site. Um, that site is still open from 10 a.m. to 6. That individual uh, site is for individuals who have mild to moderate symptoms uh, and can be tested there uh, during that time and assessed by a physician, and they can be tested not only for COVID, but can rule out things like influenza, uh, RSV, which is a respiratory virus, uh, strep, and, and, and just an overall assessment, as well as a test for COVID. Uh, and that's, like I said, still available. Uh, for a more severe symptoms, we are certainly still testing and, and can provide that care in the emergency department. Uh, and of course, we test uh, for, um, uh, inpatient and and those coming in uh, to the facility uh, if uh, if they're symptomatic. In addition to that, though, we've outstood up for over a week uh, something we call our our PTS site, which is a priority testing site, and that is being done in what used to be our uh, and and soon to be hopefully again our foundation office uh, right off of uh, 21. I think all of you are familiar with that site. That is open from 9 a.m. to 4, uh, and it is an appointment-only site. However, I'll give a, a number. Actually, I'll give it right now, and I'll give it to Justin later. That number, if you want to get a hold of, of that site for testing, is 
720-2131. That is a site that is available for asymptomatic testing, which means uh, you, you don't have to have a physician order. You do not have to have symptoms. In fact, if you do have symptoms, it's not the correct site. You'll be directed to the ACS or the emergency department based on the severity of, of your symptoms. Uh, this is for individuals that just simply want a test uh, to determine whether or not they have the presence of the, of the virus. Now, we are prioritizing those tests, uh, and I'm going to go quickly through that. There's really six priorities. We, we broke them down into four areas. Level one are all individuals who are present with symptoms. So we're testing everyone with symptoms of COVID. Level 2A and 2B are very similar. But those are healthcare workers who have been working in close proximity to positive patients or staff, or those determined for whatever reason to be at a higher level of risk. And that also includes to be first responders who are doing the same thing. As well, uh, as we go into level three, that would cover all healthcare employees, but also patients or residents who may be in close proximity. So for example, uh, in, a, in a nursing home, we've gone out and tested the entire uh, nursing home or long-term care, or individuals that are contiguous to a individual uh, or right next to an individual in rooms uh, that have tested positive. Then 3B is essential workers in the community. Um, and, and that's already been defined. I won't get into that. We know that's, that's had more than enough talk in, uh, from the state, but that's really the essential workers within, within that definition. And then for all others. Uh, now, I do want to say that's a priority list. We get through each of those priorities from one to four every day before we get to the next step. But we are right now at the capacity where we, we're testing everyone. We haven't turned anyone away. So while you say, well, what's, you know, what's the likelihood of, of me getting tested if I'm not level one, two, or, or even three? Really, really good. If you want the test, it's available. Uh, and, and it would be done at that priority testing site. Uh, the next testing uh, is something called antibody testing. And you've heard a good deal about that as well. And I may have, I'm not sure if he was able to join me this morning, uh, but I did ask Dr. Rani Abureshed, who's our Director of Neurosciences at Memorial, to join. Uh, he, if you have specific questions, we may be able to have him answer that a little bit later, uh, if I cannot. But uh, he's done an awful lot of work in helping us uh, in this area as well. So antibody testing, of course, is uh, to test for the presence of antibodies developed if you've had COVID-19 um, or, or experiencing COVID-19. Uh, it is a, a test that we have been working on very hard uh, in getting uh, on board as well, but we wanted to get a test that was already approved by the FDA. And so we worked on that. And actually the test that uh, we will be providing is in fact already now been approved by the FDA. It also has very high reliability standards by uh, testing in, in what's referred to as both a sensitivity as well as a specificity uh, uh, a number. Um, and many of these tests out, I'm sure you've heard that the accuracy is somewhat suspect and that's, that's accurate. So antibody testing will test for the presence of the antibody. Uh, that testing should be uh, starting as early as tomorrow or Friday. We should have that testing in place. We're going to be following the same priority that I just went down through uh, with the PCR type testing uh, with one exception, and that is level one will actually become now uh, level 2A. In other words, the, ACE, the symptomatic folks would typically not be tested for an antibody because they, we know that they've been tested for the virus. There's no sense in yet testing for the, the antibody unless it's for a clinical purpose to, to check on, on something like viral load. But uh, so this would be for individuals that are either recovered uh, or, or suspect that they may have had COVID or would like to know if they had COVID. Uh, we know now, and this is the so what's the value of testing either a PCR or antibody? We know now that anywhere from 20 is a low number, and I think that is low, to a high 
of, of possibly 80% or higher, which I think that's actually a high number. But someplace in the middle, uh, we know that people are transmitting this virus that are asymptomatic. In other words, they, they don't recognize that they have the disease um, and uh, taking temperatures and all of that uh, really doesn't say anything. You're, you, you know, you're, you're going to be able to transmit this disease uh, without any kind of measurable symptoms that, that we know of. We know that now by particularly testing in the areas that have been broad-based tested and, um, and, and finding individuals that had not any idea that they might be positive and in fact returning that uh, to a positive result. So there's value in the PCR testing still. There's even a greater value in the antibody testing because this can test for presence of the antibody. Yes, there's still questions out there. We don't know how long those antibodies are effective. So there'll probably be follow-up tests um, at some point. We don't know uh, the entire level of, if you get the disease, will everyone produce antibodies? Uh, right now, the, the indication is that the, the more severe the disease, uh, the more likelihood that you develop those antibodies. Uh, in most cases, we're seeing those antibodies being developed with the testing that's been done thus far. But there's some imperfect information still here, uh, and we're working through that, and that's why the more testing, the better. And along that lines, I want to provide just a little additional information. There's a lot of bad information out there with regard to things like mortality rates and how many people actually have this disease. You've probably heard in New York that instead of 270 or 280 or maybe close to 300,000 now that they have positive tested, uh, they believe that that number is, is closer to 3 million. In other words, uh, a lot of folks have had this uh, that, that were never tested positive. And the reason they're saying that is because of the antibody testing and then an extrapolation of that number into the population. If that is true, of course, that is going to have a significant impact on the level of mortality that's being measured. If you have a factor of 10 times the number of people that actually have the disease than what we thought, then the mortality is likely 10 times less than what we had indi indicated by that, if you will, that, that numerator that's being used is it's much smaller than it should be. We don't know the exact uh, nature of that. We, we look at Michigan, for example, we know that it has actually the highest mortality rate in the nation as it relates to um, a, a ratio to individuals positive to, the, to those individuals that have died. The, the problem with that is we're measuring in Michigan in particular in the early days, uh, and to some extent still, we are measuring the sickest patients. We were measuring in most cases, uh, in some cases, only those hospitalized. Uh, we know that if, if you look at an, a site like the World Meter site, we know that now down to two uh, percent uh, is considered um, uh, either critical or severe cases. How are those defined? They're defined by individuals that are hospitalized. Ninety-eight percent are considered mild. Well, if you're only testing the severe and you're only testing the critical, your mortality rate obviously is going to be much higher. So the more testing we do, the better information we'll have and, and, have a, and, and have a better understanding of what we're actually looking at here. So that's, that's my spew with regard to a, a current update and the testing. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions now that you may have or cover any other area that Justin, you or anyone else feels uh, as though I've, I've kind of missed or uh, covered lightly. Brian, thank you so much. Uh, great update. I, I do have a question, but I do want to open it up uh, first. So if anyone does have any comments uh, or questions, uh, please hit star six on your phone, star six, and uh, go ahead and ask. So does anybody have a comment or question to get started? Well, I'll get it started then. Uh, so, Brian, uh, I know there's a number of companies 
uh, uh, that are on the phone uh, that are um, either, uh, well, let's just say many of them are not operating. Some are. Uh, but I think all of them uh, have a interest in uh, the testing uh, as it relates to being able to fully reopen. I think uh, people know that that is really going to be a critical factor in creating a safe environment at their workplace. So if I am a business, let's say today I'm operating, or even if I'm going to be reopening in a couple of weeks, what should they be thinking in terms of their interaction with you? I mean, how how do those dominoes work? You know, hey, I'm coming back to work. I need my people tested. I mean, what should they be doing? What does that checklist look like for the company for testing with you? Yeah, well, good good question, Justin. Uh, for, first of all, the hotline that I gave earlier is is currently still available, and, and that is right now for that PCR uh, testing, which is for the, the viral infection. Um, as well as the ACS, and, the, and the, the hours can be given over that hotline, but again, ACS is 10 to 6. The priority testing site is 9 to 4. The ACS is walk-up, uh, open. The PC or PT, PTS site is, uh, is, a, um, uh, is a scheduled appointment. Uh, it's brief. It's a simple for the antibody, or excuse me, for the uh, for the PCR testing, it's a it's a nasal swab. It takes a, a very short time. The results will be, are back in 24 hours, uh, and that's still available for any employer uh, or individual that just wants to be tested, either symptomatic or asymptomatic. As far as antibody testing, uh, again, we're going to complete validation. We started that yesterday, um, and all the implementation and the testing and, and all of that's been done. The validation should be complete today, and we'll either start running those tests today or tomorrow. Um, and um, we will we will be doing that. So that antibody testing is a is a blood draw. It's a simple blood draw, and it will be facilitated at a number of sites uh, that Memorial uh, uh, regularly has right here at the, the hospital, uh, right at. Uh, 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 our, uh, our lab centers in Duran, as well as a health park. Uh, and if it's a large enough number, uh, we can work with individual employers to bring uh, phlebotomists right either on site or an other alternative uh, site that, that could be used for that purpose. It's just, like I said, straightforward, a lab uh, blood draw, and then that test should be uh, returned in, uh, in a couple of days. Um, so that is something that they can use that hotline as well. But we will be sending out a notification in both social media as well as through the public media uh, when that testing will actually begin. Uh, and like I said, it should be either tomorrow or Friday. So that, that testing information will be updated shortly uh, with contact information. So uh, schedule those as, as, soon as, that, uh, as soon as that becomes available if you have a desire. We do have a lot of interest right now. We're working because what we're standing up is a is a high volume, high capacity test site, um, and we're working right now with with Wayne County down in uh, Southeast Michigan, probably the hardest hit county in the state, uh, for doing a a lot of tests for for that county. Uh, but we are going to take care of uh, the Shiawassee and our service area first. We've told them that, but uh, we have the capacity, and if uh, uh, if we can help out those other areas, we uh, intend to do so. So hopefully that helps, Justin. Very much. I did just have somebody text me. Um, they uh, suggested uh, they would like to be able to cover uh, the cost for their employees, which I think is a great thing. Um, but they wanted to know what that cost would be. So if you had 10 people, 50 people, 100 people, I mean, what's a what's a budget for for the testing, Brian? Yeah, that's that's a that's a fair cost. Now I'm I'm assuming uh, in most cases the the PCR testing is insurance covered. Um, so that's uh, that's typically a a no cost uh, to the individual. It's a it's a covered charge. Uh, the asymptomatic testing uh, is a little bit different, and that's a more expensive uh, test. Uh, right now, with the uh, 
uh, with the test that's done as well as the, the collection. Uh, where costs are looking at from an individual, I believe it's right at $110, Justin, per test. If we're talking about uh, antibody testing, um, we're right now, uh, a testing cost is, um, uh, it's $40 for the test. Uh, which is a, about as low as uh, we, we could get it. Uh, and, uh, and there is a lab draw component there, uh, but we're rolling that all into one. Uh, in some of these larger areas that we're testing for, they're doing their own uh, lab draws, so we, we did break it out. But for most folks, it's going to be the lab draw and the test, and we're going to do that combined for 50 bucks. So uh, that's a... That's a significant reduction in the lab draw, but it's done at the one site. So we're going to we're going to do the antibody testing uh, for the for the 50, and uh, and I like I said I think it's 110 for the collection and the test for the PCR. Very good. Um, I'll open it up again. Any comments or questions from any listeners? Hit star six on your phone. Hey Justin, can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Hey, Justin. Uh, hi, Brian. This is Nathan Henney of the city. Yes, Nathan. Hey, uh, uh, I'm glad you covered um, the the difference between a, a PCR test and an asymptomatic test. Um, my question is that the city was on a call earlier in the week or last week about um, testing and charging insurance companies. What What is the thought behind not uh, not billing insurance companies for the asymptomatic test? Because the test is what's called client billing, Nathan. It's, in other words, in order to bill an insurance company uh, or, or CMS, Medicare, Medicaid, you, you typically have to have a physician-ordered test. And at the ACS, we have that. We have a physician there present. They do an assessment. They do a screening. Uh, this is a test uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in, the, in the asymptomatic area. That's purely screening. If you if you came in and said, I don't have I, I don't have any symptoms, I just want to be tested, that would be similar to let's let's say the difference between going in and getting a medical procedure done based on a doctor's order, or you going in and getting uh, I don't know, Botox injection to to, to perk up your 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 already uh, uh, wonderful smile. So that's a choice. It's not covered under uh, insurance. You just you just want the test done, and that is not typically chargeable to an insurance. And that that's probably the best example how I can I, I can give why one is covered and why one isn't. Um, most areas, in fact, I just had a call uh, the day before yesterday from a, an individual that said, "Can I be tested here?" and said, "Yes, you can." Well, do I need a doctor's orders? No, I do not. Are you sure? Yes, I am. Uh, she said, well, I went down into the Detroit area. I waited in line. They said, you know, you're going to be charged for an emergency room visit. And she said, okay, but I want the test. So she went in, waited in line, had the assessment, like at the ACS that we, we do, was charged the emergency room visit, and still did get, not get the test because she didn't meet the criteria. So here she paid for an ER visit, didn't get the test, uh, and, uh, uh, and and that that didn't seem right to us. So if you're in the ACS, you're going to be charged for what they actually do: an assessment, uh, a screening for in influenza. We've had we've had 50 or 60 individuals that have been uh, screened for uh, uh, regular seasonal flu and found to be not a, uh, a COVID-19, but instead just flu. So. There is a benefit in doing that screening from a symptomatic standpoint. Um, so I, I don't know if that helps or not, uh, Nathan, but that's that's the that's the difference. Okay, uh, that, thank you, Brian. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Nathan. Um, any other comments or questions uh, from uh, the uh, listeners? Hit star six on your phone if you do. Hey, Justin, this is Colleen. Yeah, I go ahead, Colleen. Quick, I got a quick question about the asymptomatic people. Um, you're pretty much saying that they they are infected, but they they're not sick. 
are they contagious for a longer amount of time or is it still pretty much the two week window that we're worried about? So there's a lot of different, uh, there's a lot of uh, different information that's been, uh, that, that's been out there. And so right now we're not using two weeks, we're using 10 days. Uh, and if an individual is asymptomatic but have tested positive, you know, if a person tested positive and they were symptomatic, we would say we're going to wait seven days and, and then, uh, uh, you know, after their, most, their latest symptom. Well, if they don't have a symptom, what do you wait for? In that case, uh, if they tested positive but they're asymptomatic, uh, we, uh, we wait 10 days. Uh, uh, before returning uh, to work. Now, in the early portion, we were actually re being required to test two definitive negative tests. That's no longer the CDC guidance. So there's a, there's a little bit of a moving target here. Uh, the test is always available to ensure that individuals not only asymptomatic, but they are now free as far as the viral load is concerned from a test standpoint. And that is probably the most definitive test. But right now, we're waiting 10 days uh, after a test of a, you know, of, of asymptomatic. Thank you, Colleen. Um, actually, that begs a question. Um, this is a more of a medical question. If I get an asymptomatic test, or I get a test, and I, uh, not asymptomatic, and uh, the antibody test, and it shows I have the antibody, which demonstrates I had the virus, I mean, does that demonstrate I have immunity so I should feel comfortable going back to work because I can't get it again? Or where does that stand? That's a, that's a great question. And so the, the antibodies that are being tested for are IgG, uh, in some cases IgM, but IgG is the antibodies that we're, we're looking for for a certain uh, indication that there's a certain level of immunity. Again, there's a lot of debate out there right now, and there's a lot of uncertainty, Justin. So I'm going to give you uh, the information that we know to date, and it's, it's frankly pretty unclear. What you said earlier is 100% accurate. If you get the antibody test, and you have antibodies in your system, in other words, it's a positive test, it will, it will tell a couple of different things. The test that we have will tell, to some degree, what's the level of that antibody in your system, and, and obviously whether you have it or not. What we don't know at this point is what exactly that, does that give you? And there is a, uh, uh, a fairly strong uh, position right now that, that will provide you with a level of, of immunity. We don't know what to what extent. So as far as I've seen, there hasn't been any information that's been uh, peer-reviewed and definitive to suggest that someone has reacquired the disease after they've had uh, the disease. We do know that some levels of antibodies are low or non-existent uh, uh, with individuals that may have tested positive, which would indicate that the severity of the disease has to be a level that generates antibodies in the body um, uh, in order to fight the infection. And if that didn't happen, you may not generate antibodies. Of course, that would be showing up in the antibody test. The other question we have right now, and it's probably the most pressing, is if there is immunity, and there's likely to be some level, how long is that immunity good for? Is it, is it good for a year? As you know, there's some uh, vaccines that we receive uh, boosters or titers uh, for uh, that uh, are intended to rejuvenate, if you will, or rebuild that antibody protection. We don't know all of that. And that's why, again, likely that the antibody testing that are, that's being done now will be redone on some individuals to determine just how long these antibodies stay in your system. So I don't, you know, it's, it's an imperfect answer because it's a, right now there's imperfect data. Uh, and there's, there's frankly, excuse the French, but there's a lot of BS out there uh, about uh, individuals considering what might be or what might not be. And the fact is we don't know 
with a certain to, a certainty whether or not it, it, it provides what level of immunity or for how long. Gotcha. One, and not to monopolize the conversation, but one last question on that. Um, based on your knowledge, what timeline are we still looking at in terms of a vaccine? Any, any idea there? Uh, you, you know, uh, n not not really. Uh, we're two areas that we didn't touch on this morning was one vaccine and two treatments. So vaccine, you know, there was a, a recent uh, uh, discussion, I think just yesterday uh, with uh, uh, with the, the task force out of Washington. And there is some hope and promise that 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 fall or late fall, there could be a vaccine uh, available. We do know that uh, a couple of studies now in, are in phase two studies. There's phase one, phase two, and phase three. Uh, and phase two is, is actually, uh, phase one is really the safetyness of the, or the safety of the, the vaccine. In other words, we give this to someone, any bad things happen, and we measure that. Phase two is then the effectiveness of that vaccine. So we're in those tests with a couple of the studies. And then phase three would be an expanded, broader testing. And then, of course, getting that vaccine generated with the numbers that could be provided to the general public. Uh, so there's still hope that late fall uh, right now, I think that's very optimistic, but uh, uh, that's, that's what we're hearing out of Washington. Uh, on the treatment side, you didn't ask this question, uh, but there's one antiviral drug that has proven uh, somewhat effective, and it did get recent FDA approval. Uh, it was used both on a compassionate side for severe cases and found to have uh, some uh, positive uh, influence in the, the progression and the recovery rate of the disease. It is also proven that in less severe cases, if taken early, almost like a Tamiflu, uh, with regard to the flu, it would, in some cases, lessen the severity and the duration of the disease as well. Um, and that's in its early steps uh, as well. I'm, I'm hearing that that's beginning to be uh, uh, administered and sent out to hospitals uh, for more broad-based usage. Gotcha. Great. Uh, any other comments or questions for Brian? Hit star six on your phone. Anybody else have anything? Um, hi, this is Gail. Um, oh, go ahead, Gail. Uh, this is Gail from the Lodges of Duran. Um, first of all, thank you so much for your cooperation in testing our staff and residents. Um, I, I thank you so much. Um, I'm sure you saved lives. Um, the other thing I'd like to ask is, is there a volunteer research program that you know of for uh, positive antibody testing um, that is taking volunteers for those who may be willing to contribute? So I'm, I'm assuming you may be, you may be talking uh, with regard to convalescent plasma type treatment? Or anyone who may have um, positive antibody, antibodies. Yeah, so we are we are talking uh, with uh, folks out of Mid Michigan, uh, up in Midland, uh, part of the Michigan Health. Uh, they're they're working a little bit right now in the convalescent plasma uh, uh, treatment program. And for those not familiar with that, they basically uh, uh, draw blood product from uh, the individuals who have recovered from the disease, separate that into a a treatment plasma that is then given to individuals suffering from the disease with the intent uh, that they're drawing out the antibodies uh, from the individuals that, that have survived and, and uh, recovered from the disease to strengthen the system of those that are still fighting the disease. Uh, and that is why we're, we're very interested also in antibody testing. I didn't cover that. That's more on the, the clinical and the treatment side, but we are working with, as I said, Wayne County. Uh, one of the reasons for that is they, they're working and we are working with the American Red Cross to, to create a, um, uh, a repository, if you will, uh, for this type of treatment uh, for use in, in, that, in, in that way. So we're at the early stages uh, of that, but we hope that there may be some benefit 
uh, to our community or our potential patients uh, uh, should that develop further. It does also appear to be a promising treatment option uh, that's out there. So we're, we're exploring that. But the antibody testing, of course, is first. We have to determine who has those antibodies and at what strength uh, in order to potentially enlist them into a volunteer program should they have a desire to do so. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you, Gail. Uh, someone else was going to jump on with a question, too? Yeah, Justin. It's Randy Beatty. Um, yeah. Brian, several of us at, at my place, uh, my business, um, have routine lab work done every every couple of weeks, and my question was, and we I think, believe we have to go into the hospital now because the satellite labs are closed. Um, can we get this blood drawn for the antibody when we go into the main lab for routine blood draw, or does that have to be done separately at the other facility? No, and you secondly, can have it done. Is Randy, yeah. as long as we know that you want that test at the same time, yes, you could do it then. It's a it's a standard routine blood draw so there's no reason why that couldn't be done at, at a at, at a regular uh, periodic blood draw as well okay uh, one other quick question if we if our doctor were to give us a prescription for that or if, if they can would that then be billable to insurance uh, possibly we're looking at that right now randy and unfortunately cms or the other insurance uh, companies that we work for have not provide us, provided us with any information with regard to billing, reimbursement, whether it's covered, and if it is, at what cost. We, we don't have any of that. So we do have that for the PCR testing finally, uh, but we're still waiting on that. So we hope to, to learn yes, but right now we, we don't have anything from, from any source yet that have, that's been definitive. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Randy. Um, any other additional comments or questions for Brian? Hit star six on your phone. Hey, Justin, it's Laura Darline. How are you? Yeah, good. Hey, Laura. Go ahead. Hey, Brian, thanks for doing this. Um, I have a quick question regarding the antibody testing. So if a business um, or a public uh, business and as an employer or a public facing business wanted to do continual testing on the antibody, is there a minimum window of time where you would allow retesting? So if, let's say they did it on, uh, on April 1st and then they wanted to have them tested again since you don't know the length of, it's unknown as to the length of time that the antibody lasts. If they just wanted to continue to create that assurance within yeah. their community, you know, can they do it again in 30 days or what's the recommendation? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question, Laura. And, and so the first thing we know is that antibody testing typically is not done, as I said, symptomatically. And the reason for that is the antibodies are built, you know, as a response to the disease, not in, in some cases, uh, several days or a couple of weeks after uh, the initial symptoms of the disease show up. It doesn't have to be, like I said, some people never have symptoms. They're asymptomatic and they develop antibodies. But we do know that the likelihood is that uh, early in the disease, the, the testing for antibodies is less successful because they just haven't been developed. And that normally happens over several days. The question you asked was a little bit different. So you go in, you have the test, you have the antibody, it's found. Then you say, well, how, I want to know, am I, do I still have it in my system? Is it still good? And and right now, we, we don't know how, how long that's going to last. And so uh, I, I would like to have better guidance for you, but I think that's going to be some of the questions that we're going to have to follow up. I think 30 days is probably going to be premature. But is there likelihood that it's going to be done in 90 days and then in six months and then in a year? Yes. Um, but as far as legally or as far as what we're willing to provide, we don't have a predetermined uh, set. So if you wanted to have it done in, in 90 days and say, I just want to be checked again, we'll do that test for you. And we're going to provide that test to, to the extent that we possibly can to as many people as we can, we believe that testing is extraordinarily important. 
and uh, you know, I guess we're kind of in a minority here because others just aren't doing that that testing to that level. But we believe in it. I don't want to waste it though, so I I'll have to find out uh, medically if if there's any value uh, in in that being done any any shorter period of time, like 60 days or 30 days. Like I said, I suspect 30 days is going to be probably too soon, but we'll get some additional information and, and get back with you if you'd like, Laura. Thanks so much. Appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Laura. Any uh, any additional comments or questions? Hit star six on your phone. Anybody else? Okay, well, uh, wow, I, I think uh, we've been doing this now, I think seven or eight weeks. Uh, that was the very best Q&A uh, we've had. Um, so, um, Brian, I, I can't thank you enough for not only joining the call today and uh, giving us all this great information, but um, I think we all need to appreciate how much, uh, how lucky we are to have this hospital in our community and all the work we're do- that is being done here. It's really amazing. I mean, um, just so very grateful, Brian, for you and your team and, and all that you're doing. Uh, my last question is, um, I know a lot of companies on the phone are going to want to engage with you uh, in terms of testing uh, their employees. Uh, can you tell everybody again, you know, what's the best way to do that and who do they need to call and what's that number? Yeah, so again, the hotline for testing for either the antibody or uh, the uh uh, for the, the PCR test is 989-720-2131. And there'll be a couple of options. The very first option will be testing. Uh, the ACS site for symptoms and for screening for mild to moderate uh, symptoms uh, is still open right right in the, uh, the main parking lot. You'll see the signage, 10 to 6 p.m., walk up, you know, no appointment. The priority testing site, you've got the number again. Uh, that's, uh, that's for appointment only, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, if you're a larger size organization, we'd be happy to talk to you about coming on site. We've done that for a number of locations. Happy to do that as well. Or if you just have some general questions you'd like to follow up on, uh, feel free uh, to, to call that number and you'll be directed uh, towards someone that will provide more detailed uh, information. We will also be posting at our social media and in general public media uh, when the antibody testing should begin, uh, as I said, hopefully as early as tomorrow or Friday, uh, but we will get a definitive date out uh, ASAP. Okay, very good. Any final comments or questions for Brian? Anybody have anything? Okay. Well, Brian, thank you again. Uh, very much appreciate all that you're doing. You have the phone number, everybody. Please uh, give that number a call uh, if you need to uh, pursue this. So, Brian, thanks again. Uh, we do have a couple more items to cover on the call. So, um, for those that can stick around, um, uh, please do so. I do want to introduce uh, Tom Cook, uh, uh, from the Cook Family Foundation, who was actually on uh, yesterday to give an update. But, um, uh, Tom, can you kind of tell folks how things turned out with uh, Giving Tuesday now? Uh, uh, very well. Um, and, and thanks for the time yesterday and the time today. The goal was never about raising money. It was about to, uh, expressing some gratitude and thanks for uh, ev- all that everybody has done in these uh, since this crisis began. And so from that measure, it was certainly a success. Uh, thanks to Memorial Healthcare and all their frontline workers, noted that today is uh, the start of Nurses Week, and uh, all, all quite appropriate that we uh, continue to recognize them as well as everybody else that uh, stepped up. There were some funds raised uh, through several businesses, and I want to thank people for that. I saw that uh, the Fitness Coliseum did a challenge uh, that raised. Uh, over $4,800 for the COVID response fund that the county is operating uh, and that Shattuck uh, Advertising uh, donated uh, from that, from their uh, signs they had for frontline workers. And I think the most exciting news is that uh, the Consumers Energy has made a 
$10,000 donation to the Shiawassee Community Fund for their COVID uh, uh, response fund as well. So just really appreciative of all the uh, people that have stepped up and I think it remains a, a great opportunity for uh, businesses to give back uh, and express their thanks for everything that's been done. So uh, thank you, Justin. Thank you, Tom. Uh, great, to, great to hear. Uh, a couple of other items real quick. Uh, we are getting some indication uh, they are starting to look at the next round of small business uh, stimulus okay. money in Washington. Uh, what's interesting, at least from the initial conversation, is it looks like there may be some push to try to get some dollars uh, for stuff other than uh, payroll. So uh, some modifications uh, to being able to use some dollars for other expenses. Uh, so uh, that would probably be some kind of a modification to the PPP program, uh, but um, they're, they're looking at some changes. So uh, definitely something we want to monitor. I don't think there's anything imminent, uh, even though the money is running out uh, in the PPP. Uh, but just want to give everybody a heads up on that. There's still maybe more uh, uh, coming in Washington. Um, as far as talking about PPE, uh, personal protective equipment, uh, Jody in our office sent out a uh, note uh, yesterday to several folks that uh, are working in that uh, arena, products and services. Uh, so if you are, uh, please take time to fill out that uh, spreadsheet. Uh, we are going to have, uh, as I mentioned yesterday, additional speakers uh, each day. Uh, not today, but uh, actually tomorrow and Friday. Uh, we're going to have, uh, tomorrow I believe we're going to have high-quality glass uh, to talk about their new mobile barrier system uh, that they're partnering with our friends from SLH Metals on. Uh, and then Friday we're going to have our friends from HULF, H-U-L-F-T, uh, who have a technology solution. Uh, that I think is uh, pretty innovative. So you're going to want to be on the call uh, both days uh, uh, for that. Uh, I did send out a survey yesterday from Bishop Airport. So many people on the call uh, fly through Bishop. Uh, they're looking for some input. Uh, you may have heard uh, there is some uh, uh, concern that some of the flights uh, uh, may uh, want to be pulled out of Bishop. I think Delta is one that's uh, – unfortunately looking at least temporarily for, uh, for discontinuing service. So I think they're looking for some input, uh, some guidance to try to help create a, a business case. Uh, so we're actually going to have the CEO of the airport on our call on Friday to give you an update. Um, even though it's not in Shiawassee County, many of our residents, many of our businesses use this airport, and I think it's in our best interest to do everything we can uh, to support them. So they will be on the call on Friday. Please take a moment uh, to fill out that uh, survey. Uh, a couple of other things real quick. Uh, tomorrow we're going to have our friends from PTAC on the call. That's our government contracting office. Uh, they've got some information uh, and some updates on uh, what's going on this month. I did send out an email uh, yesterday with an update on what they're working on. They're going to give us a, a briefing tomorrow. Um, we did get some indication, uh, and this is maybe more for some of our uh, uh, local government partners. There's a federal uh, program. It's called the Economic Development Administration. It's through the U.S. Department of Commerce. Uh, and they have some grant dollars that can be used for community uh, development projects. Uh, we've gotten some early indication that their programs, which used to have a 50% match, uh, now may be a 100% grant. Uh, so uh, we're trying to get in touch with our representative on that and maybe get them on a call. Uh, I know they've funded things like public infrastructure in the past, uh, business incubators, uh, building out industrial parks, things like that. So uh, we definitely want to learn uh, uh, more about that. Uh, and then um, the uh, last thing uh, we'll talk about is what I always talk about, jobs. Uh, if anyone has any jobs uh, they're trying to fill, please do let us know. Uh, we'd be happy to help uh, promote. So uh, with that, um, I know we're running pretty close to 10 o'clock, but if anyone has any questions or comments, uh, please uh, ask now. Hit star six. Hey, Justin, can you hear me? Can you hear me, Justin? Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Hey, hey, Justin, this is Brian at Great Lakes. Hey, hey Brian. I, I sent you and Brent and Jody an email just a little bit ago. 
I thought this was pretty interesting. Maybe we could share with the group. A uh, company out of Novi appears to have developed an app uh, for health screening where uh, you could get this app and your employees could all have the app and they could actually answer a small little questionnaire and it's kind of like a little quick health screen. Um, I thought it was very interesting and it looks like there is a webinar at 2 p.m. today. Uh, the company's out of Novi called Red Level Group. Um, maybe, maybe you could share that article with everybody because I, I thought that app looked like very interesting uh, tool. Yep, I see it right here, Brian. I will uh, get this out uh, right away uh, to the list. Thank you for that. Is the link to the webinar in the article? Yes, it is. Okay. Yep, and it, it is a free app, but it also looks like it could be customizable to different companies if you so wish. Um, okay. But uh, it looked like a very neat tool that uh, companies could potentially use as we're getting back to work and bringing our employees back. Very good. Thank you. I'll get that out right away. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions from anybody? Hit star six. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody. Another uh, good day. Great information from our hospital. Um, if you need anything from us, uh, give us a call or shoot us an email. Thank you. Thank you.